What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Game Show Global Esports Cup. We're in the tie-breaking best of ones. Currently, CIS Rejects have won one game, which is nice, but it isn't the end all. If they win this one, then they're going to be well positioned on top of the group. Then it's up to Aspera and Walrus Punch to fight it out, but uh, it's up to Aspera, of course. Um, Mike Loris is going to be joined by Lyrical Gangster on the mic. We got Cruft Drop Bear on the staff as well. This one should be just as good. I would say uh, Aspera and Walrus Punch, probably the two teams that are closest in skill level. Yeah, incredibly well-known teams uh, in terms of this region and certainly have a very strong impact. I'm curious to see this time if potentially Aspera was watching that last game, it might opt to just ban out the Tiny or the Io because that combo, it just looked impressively strong. They were able to completely and totally run out of Big Red Machine uh, slash Walrus Punch, depending upon the day. And it, it just it looked like they have a very firm grasp on what they want to do with that combination, the way that they want to play it. And, you know, a couple of days ago when they ended up playing in this tournament as well, we saw them go for an early Blink Dagger. This time around, they ended up going for the Aghanim Scepter on the Tiny, leaving the Blink Dagger for uh, for somebody else to be taking that Rubik instead. And it didn't look to really phase them that much. So they actually ended up banning out the Io this time around. A little bit interesting. So going to be going for the uh, Shadow Fiend Queen of Pain Io bans. And one more here for the Radiant. I'm a little bit surprised by that. Yeah, I mean, they did ban out the Tusk, or someone ban out the Tusk in the last game. I believe it was CIS Rejects. Uh, that is something that I wouldn't uh, hesitate to see Aspera pick up at all. I mean, Ar uh, Afterlife plays a really great one. Our Zeke sometimes goes techies, and in the best one scenario, sometimes you just got a Hail Mary in that. But instead, it's going to be a Darkseer opening for the CIS Rejects. It is a much slower opening already. Like, Io Tiny is super explosive, and Darkseer, not as much, though. A little bit more, uh, you know, consistent and. Uh, just an overall slower hero, so interesting to see this pretty much drastic 180 shift from the last remaining. game into this one. Yeah, and maybe part of the reason for that is because you do end up in a situation here where they're feeling a little bit more pressure from Aspera than they were from Big Red Machine. It's certainly a possibility, at least, and not wanting to push their luck too much further. I mean, Io Tiny is something that you can punish if you're able to find the right lineup and able to execute correctly. And might be a little bit worried about Aspera being able to counter that early pick, and again, in a best of one... Well, you can go cheesy drafts, there's a very real possibility that those can be punished, regardless of if they're cheesy drafts or not. And we see a really strong combo here out of Aspera, the Clockwork Gyrocopter. I'm going to be laying down the call down on top of all sorts of people uh, if he's able to land that there. The technology opening is you know, always a pretty solid one, of course, Clockwork. Gives the Sparrow not only a solid offlane, a very comfortable hero for Afterlife, but also a form of initiation that the Darkseer does not give. We see the instant response, the Ice Rejects, and they grab a Rubik as a type of anti clockwork play. But again, this is uh, looking like the Ice Rejects want to go take this one to a slighter late ga uh, slight late game Radiant stage. At back. least, uh, you know, not try to end the game super early. Dark should be just going to an off lane. Rubik should be just going towards the safe lane. And for Aspera, it's up to them to uh, you know either out late game the CS Rejects pick, back. which is going to be difficult given that they already have their Gyrocopter, and CS Rejects could very easily grab someone like a Spectre and then just you know have that working for them down the line. Or just get in underneath, and that seems like it should be the uh, the strategy that CS Rejects are scared of. That's why they're banning out the Dragonite. It's probably the more viable plan for Aspera. Yeah, and I, I do think as well that, you know, with the ban of the Winter Wyvern, a hero that is really great at being able to hold high ground, really great at being able to keep the enemy off of towers with that Splinter Blast, being able to one-shot range creeps at level 4, you're able to just sort of consistently keep that lane pushed out in a way that sort of a coddle is, although probably not quite... Uh, as sort of wide and as encompassing in terms of the, the magical damage you're able to do. And another really early aggressive ban on out here from CIS Reject. Instant Apparition going to be the ban. And certainly they don't want to end up running into it. Chilling Touch is a huge, huge, huge team fight spell in the early game, particularly around those... Uh, bounty rune fights in the level so, one. So man. not wanting to, to have any types of shenanigans going on here. Five seconds but remaining. also Ancient Apparition does shut down a couple of heroes. Any oh. healing, of course, gets a little bit less viable. We see the Huskar now banned out. That's team. the hero that I was thinking of. Uh, usually the go-to counter. CS Rejects may be trying to angle for that one. Unfortunately, uh, not going to slip that one past our Zeke. So Ancient Apparition banned now. Still fine. I think this hero is very threatening in the right circumstance, as long as he has a set-up partner for uh, the cold feet or a little bit of range for the extra chilling touch procs. 
gets a little bit worse if they're actually not planning on going for any sort of a healing. Obviously, Darkseer is going to be going for mech, or he should be going for Ten mech, so that remaining. is kind of nice, but uh, you know, worth a ban? Probably not. Five Espera, now where remaining. are they going to go? Mid lane, still kind of out in the open. Uh, you Reserve could still go time. for like your Lina's and that type of hero, but I'm not really sure how willing th these teams are to go for that, especially after the new patch. Well, and you know, you mentioned that uh, the Huskar ban might have been a little bit preemptive and they might have been able to counter it. One of the things that I'm thinking they could have potentially also banned out here might have been a Disruptor. Oh, and there's the Disruptor pick. They wanted to take him instead. Since they had that first pick, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I think I said Disruptor as Disruptor said Disruptor. So Jinx Disruptor, stay silent, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, I, I do think that that's really great against the Darkseer here as well. And it's also a bit of a uh, takeaway pick for the Dire, considering they have the clockwork in the game. So a really key hero here and uh, makes a lot of sense that a Sparrow would want to go for the Huskar ban instead and leave the Disruptor for them and uh, to be picked up. The combo's pretty well with the Gyrocopter as well. Five just in lane, remaining. someone trying to get away, just glimpse him right back into a call down, into a rocket barrage, and that's a hell of a lot of damage. Reserve Most of the time, time should be a kill, especially if they have any sort of follow-up stun, which I think should be the uh, order of business for a Sparrow. Both sides a little bit light on the crowd control effects right now, so that should be you know, placed slightly uh, more at a premium for both of these sides. I don't think it's possible for, C for CIS Rejects to really counterpick this Disruptor that much. Like, just, I guess, Lina. try to kill him in lane. It seems like the Lina is going to be the pick for the CIS Radiant Rejects. Maybe going pick. towards mid lane, but even if she's not, just wandering around with the Rubik, being an aggressive roaming duo, it's pretty darn deadly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I say this in almost every cast that I see these, but, you know, 1.5 second lift, uh, 1.6 second uh, light strike array, that's 3.1 seconds of disable with a lot of, a lot of right clicks in between. Ain't nothing to sneeze at. Lots of damage coming on out there. But the other thing that I'm going to mention here is Disruptor, with that recent buff, Thunderstrike going down to a 9-second cooldown at level 4, dealing 400 magical damage, and it lasts for 6 seconds. That means it only has a downtime of 3 seconds now on that Disruptor for the Thunderstrike. Not necessarily something that you would often level up and max out first, but I think there is some credence to that idea now and the ability to just consistently keep that applied. Even as you go towards the late game, it's really, really really uh, frustrating to play against. And it combos up pretty well with the Clockwork as well, because it does provide that vision. You give your Clockwork you know, a little bit more intel, he'll be able to angle himself properly to actually make some initiation happen, because well, everyone's taking, tip, everyone's taking chip damage, everyone is spotted, you're good to go if you're Clockwork. Uh, CS Redux also not incredibly tanky, I mean Darkseer is, but Lina and Rubik, if they get hit with the hookshot, then if there's any sort of follow-up from a spare, whether it be a static storm or a call down, neither of these two heroes are going to survive. Maybe Yule Scepter on Lina is going to buy her a little bit of space, but you know, not really going to get her out of that entire scenario. So, it is the uh, initiation power in the hands of a spare. The uh, pickoff potential is certainly there as well. For CIS rejects, Naga Lina does have a lot of power now. Naga Siren pickup for the spare side. Something our Zeke has been playing quite a bit of. But, uh, I mean, CS so yeah, are kind of already decently prepared to deal with this. Yeah, they. Uh, I think that they are. I am a little bit worried about the Dark Seer in this lane now, though, if this is going to be uh, either if it's a safe lane Naga or if it's a, uh, a support Naga. And with the Slark pickup as well, very, very interesting there. The thing that I'll mention about the Naga Siren there with the Dark Seer is part of the reason that Dark Seer can be such an effective offlaner is because of that relatively high armor. And with Riptide being able to lower that armor by two, I think it brings him down to five, if I'm not mistaken, um, somewhere around that mark. It really lowers that tankiness that the Darkseer is kind of known for, so can be a really difficult lane for him. We'll see if he's going to be able to deal with it. Certainly not going to be a safe lane Nagasari now that I'm actually uh, taking a look at that gyrocopter there. What do you think about this Slark pickup? I think it's Radiant okay, kind of. Uh, Slark, not really what you want to be doing versus Naga Siren, who you just sing, and you can't pack out of it. Maybe you'll be able to BKB through it, but Slark also kind of weak versus Disruptor, and Gyrocopter has a lot of AoE as well. I feel like this is kind of just like a uh, you know, comfort pick here for CIS rejects. The upside of having a Rubik and Lina set up for your Slark is definitely there, and Slark with Ion Shell is a devastating hero, but you're walking into a lot. Ten this is one of those remaining. picks that's really good with what CIS rejects have, but really bad up against what Aspera have. Legion you Commander. have to take that trade off. Another Legion Commander. Dying okay, so pick. it looks like that might be their mid lane, actually. The Naga Siren yeah. Disruptor Gyrocopter tri lane works very well together. It's very hard to crack, even if you're a Darkseer. 
uh, Clockwork, Legion Commander. I mean, they're the odd ones out. Legion versus Lena actually isn't terrible for the Legion Commander, but still, I would say it's Lena favored. Yeah, and we'll see if this is indeed going to be a Lena mid or if it was that support that we were talking about. I think with this Legion Commander pick, you can say, yeah, let's go for Lena mid now and pick another support if they wanted to. It does look like they banned out the Razor for Aspera, so not wanting uh, to have him go up against Legion if they do think that this was a support, Lena. Viper's still in the pool as well, which I feel like could really mess up Legion if they wanted to go for that. Um, a lot of picks at this point in time. I mean, obviously, we do still have Press the Attack, which is able to purge away the the slow that comes out from the viper but i don't know it's a little bit difficult and I, I like what you said there about it the slurk works well with the picks that cas rejects has but not against what aspera has because i do feel like cas rejects is very pick off oriented while trying to sort of slow down the push a little bit and we'll see if this lack last pick ends up sort of confirming that type of play or if they're going to try and change to, uh, tracks a little bit well they Again, would like a little bit more crowd control. It's uh, kind of hard up against Legion Commander, but still very possible to make that happen. Uh, I think the decision point right here for CIS Rejects is, do we send this Lena mid lane? Do we have her on the roam? Uh, they can very easily grab another support hero Ten with the Rubik. Uh, Shaker is actually still in this pool, which mm -hmm. is freaking weird to see. Five but uh, would be a decent pickup just jamming up Aspera's Dusk. combos. It's a Tusk instead, who is also still in the pool. So yeah, he's going to be the last pick here versus Yash Rejects. He's going to give the Lena to Iceberg, it seems. So it is going to be a mid Lena. Tusk as the pick is a actually very effective counter pick towards Legion Commander. Duel doesn't do that much when you can't hit them. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, obviously, we did end up seeing that uh, nerf to the amount of time that you're able to stay in snowball form. So not quite as effective as a bubble as it was before, but certainly still really good and is going to be able to keep you alive, hopefully for a good amount of time while you are uh, being dueled on up there. I will also mention that I do like that at least the fact that we're getting kicked out of these games, we're able to see the draft first, because that would be very frustrating if we weren't able to see the draft. <laughs> Able to see a couple of uh, who picks up what also, just to get the yeah. confirmation. Iceberg's not going to be playing a support Lena. A lot of wasted <laughs> talent there, I think. Just, you know, he's an explosive player. Give him a hero that is going to be explosive and has the ability to do so. The Tusk and the Rubik, it seems, are going to be played as supports. They don't actually work that well together. However, Slark is a hero that doesn't mind being put into a snowball to you know to some battle. very aggressive end purpose. Yeah, definitely. He can be, uh, he loves to be all up in everybody's mess. He's just hitting away there consistently. I think the lanes are pretty well established at this point in time. Legion Commander picking on up that stout shield to help deal with the harassment coming out from Iceberg. That is one part of Lena's kit that's very frustrating. It does look like they're going to try and potentially have some type of battle over here. I feel like this kind of favors the Tusk <laughs> lineup. Such a dangerous hero in these early engagements. And they're actually going to get both bounty runes. Slark picking up top and Lena getting the bot one. Well, GG. It's over. Sash rejects win. <laughs> you can't come back from double bounty runes. You can, but uh, the... Ion Shell definitely making things very difficult, and Tusk, uh, the shards, especially in this environment where there are so many easy paths to block, it's uh, nothing that Aspera really want to be doing. As powerful as Rocket Barrage is level 1, it's just not comparable to double Ion Shell on CIS Rejects with proper stun follow-up to make sure that those Ion Shells can actually stick. But while we're actually in this game, let's actually introduce everyone before we end up uh, disconnecting again. RT is going to be playing the Slark up towards top. Actually, maybe not a time for that. Afterlife is going to get jumped right now, lift up and hit into a pound. Shard's going to block off his way. He has cogs available. He's taking so many right clicks. He'll get dropped by RT Slark. A great first blood kill for CS Rejects. Very well executed. They're going to have Vanscore on the Rubik. Oh, he's going to fly on the Tusk. Iceberg is going to be playing that lean on down towards bottom lane. Gortz is on the darks here, but man, that's a start for Slark. He can get a that much faster hand of Midas if he really wants to. Yeah, absolutely. Roger, meanwhile, taking that Thunderstrike first just to harass away the Darks here. He's going to be playing the Disruptor. We do have RMN who's going to be playing the Gyrocopter. Or Zeke is going to be on that Naga Siren rotating around trying to get a little bit of uh, extra angle on on that Darks here. Undershock in the mid, Legion Commander Salvin on up to keep her HP topped off, and Afterlife is going to be playing your Clockwork today. Is up against a rough lane. Like, Rubik and Slark, that in of itself is pretty deadly. We can see, see the effectiveness of being able to just line the hero up with the telekinesis and then straight up pounce after them. And afterlife, at that point, your options is run, try to run, or put up power cogs. Power cogs don't actually work very well versus Slark. 
since he's right next to you. That's how the fight starts off. So it's a rough lane up here with just these two heroes. He will get a lot of experience. Seems like they lost control of the lane a little bit. So you know, a couple of extra levels is going to definitely put things back into his favor, at least, you know, so he could do something up on top. But with always want to fly patrolling between mid and top lanes, it's going to be difficult for really both of these lanes for Aspera. Like Iceberg can make great use of a little bit of help from Tusk. Just shards to delay on a shock, land an LSA, nuke him down afterwards, or just do what we already saw in the top lane. Yeah, definitely. It's a really, really tough lane. But that being said, Darkseer has been forced completely out of lane, rotating up top now into the jungle. He was getting zoned out by the Disruptor, who ended up breaking the one clarity that he brought into lane with him. And now he had to go all the way back there, and is going to have to jungle to try and get a level 2 here. Uh, he did have to bring out a second clarity on himself, as well as the Bassy, but really, really difficult time so far in the lane. And, and having to, I mean, <laughs> at two minutes, having to rotate across to the jungle to try and take up a quick level two with these creep camps here not how you want to start at all and we can already see the effects Dyer's of it on the safe lane of Aspera. they rotate the naga siren in towards the mid lane and almost bring the lena down and naga siren almost dies for it but no one's actually going to die in the end uh the fact that they don't need all these heroes here on the bottom lane means that roger is able to get his pulls off and looks like he will do just that uh, i think this camp wasn't done properly but that's fine you always have the next one uh, the Gyrocopter is A-OK -okay to be down here by himself, and well, no one to pressure him. The Naga Siren is free to roam around. Naga Siren and Legion Commander, kind of a clunky combo there, but man, they could get away with, you know, only leaving this Gyrocopter on bottom lane, freeing up their supports. Maybe even to pressure the Darks here again. Goretz will get a little bit of farm in his own jungle, but he's only level 1 right now. Ideally, you want to be level 3 by the time you are forced to do this, just so you could actually Ion Shell creeps and get Dyer's kills, but it takes so long fine. with level 1 Ion Shell. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that it was just really, really great zoning by the Disruptor that we saw. Um, Armin here is going to just be able to get whatever he wants. Disruptor, like you said, making those stacks work, even though that last one ended up having a little bit of trouble here. I do also like as well the fact that, you know, Naga Siren has a ton of base armor to start six at the early levels, so she can really pressure in on Iceberg Dota up there in the mid lane. And with Noda, no IO this time around, certainly not a very common combo that you see the Lena IO, he's going to have trouble being able to sustain here, particularly if the Naga Siren is consistently able to sit mid. So you really need to hope that the uh, Darkseer here is going to be able to make the move to try and get back to that bottom lane once he ends up getting a couple more levels so that he can stay alive. But regardless, even with those levels that he might get eventually, it's going to be tough. And they're actually going to switch out, always want to fly, and bring him down and transition him into an offlaner. But he's going to get chased out by the Gyrocopter yet again. We do have Glimpse up if they want to use it. No, not opting to take it this time. And are just going to go on back to last hitting and applying pressure to this tower here. Well, Tusk on the offlane, definitely uh, a standard thing to see, so he should be able to survive here. It is Dyer's difficult up against Glimpse, but you know, Roger's only low level. Your Tusk should be getting a good amount of experience, and this is effectively turning the Darkstone full on jungler. Of course, top lane, they're going to jump in towards Afterlife. Great TP out from Afterlife. is going to keep him alive, yes, but every single time Rubik spends 120 mana, he burns some gold of the clockwork and a hell of a lot of time. Still very much so worth for CS Redex to go for those plays, but they can force out a TP every single time. Uh, it is going to be just CS Redex now, just happily farming away. I don't think Always Wanna Fly can really do that much versus this Gyrocopter, but hey, at least he's going to be getting a good amount of experience. And now Lina actually has level 6 versus the level 4 Legion Commander. Lina's been getting the runes, and Legion really has not. Iceberg cannot 100 to 0 these heroes, but damn, he can do a lot of damage. If anyone comes in here, Iceberg is looking at a kill. Yeah, definitely. It's a super scary lane, and I, I think particularly because of the very nature of Legion Commander, she kind of has to... If she doesn't get those runes, she's not able to last hit as effectively with overwhelming odds, and because of that, she is going to have to move on forward into the lane to try and last hit that way. But if you end up doing that, you're going to take a lot of harassment from the Lena. It's overall a bit of a dangerous one, and this is the thing that I was somewhat worried about. I mean, the Stout Shield helps in terms of the damage block, but Lena has that really long range uh, being able to just right-click away, and uh, very, very tough lane so far. I think that pretty much you can say that the bottom lane was one for the Radiant, being able to uh, push the Darkseer completely out of lane, but we are seeing CAS Rejects respond pretty well. I, I, I like the Tusk rotation into the bot, like you need to be able to make this happen. It might make the top lane a little bit more difficult, but as you mentioned, they're pushing the Clockwork out as well, so I don't know, kind of a little bit of back and forth. I think the Despera is looking pretty good so far, though. Yeah, 
it could be definitely a lot worse. The problem is that bottom lane's recovering for CS rejects, since Goritz is getting jungle farm and the Tusk is getting farm now. Whereas for top lane and Aspera, they have levels in the clockwork, which is nice. Comparable almost always on flies. Actually, you can't them fast. That's gonna help quite a bit. Armand's gonna try to close in. Double damage rune is still available. He's gonna snow get snowballed. Always on fly though is gonna fall to the gyros remnants of the rocket barrage. Big kill on the bottom lane for the gyrocopter double damage helping out a lot there, but Afterlife down to the bottom lane again. Pounced up, he has RZ here to help, but how much can he actually help? RZ's gonna go into the shadow dance, slay the clockwork, and be on his way. So it's even off lane trades now, and Darkseer just gonna slip right back into the jungle. This is going definitely a lot better for CS Rejects. The mid lane especially, Iceberg, is gonna not be dislodged here for a very long time. The Naga Siren can't effectively gank at level 3, and the Shuffer is level 4, which is nice, but if he had you know, Rubik with him maybe, but uh, Rubik's on the other team. He needs some sort of help if he's actually going to go for a kill on this Lina, convincingly. Especially since Lina should be closing out on her Yule Scepter shoot soon enough. So going for her is going to be much more important, but also a lot more difficult. Yeah, it's going to be a tough kill. It's going to, we're going to have to see, like, because the problem that you end up having if you do try and go for a kill, looks like Vanscore might try and find something over here to the side. He's going to get found out by our Zeke. The Ensnare is going to get tossed on out there. Ends up getting caught. We do have the Clockwork here as well with the Battery Assault. It looks like they're not going to be able to keep up with them, though. Rubik a little bit too fast with those boots, but I was mentioning about the Lina is that she can always just turn back around on you, toss down the Light Strike Array, and just get a kill. It's so difficult to be able to take her down. Uh, and it looks like we're actually going to have a little bit of a problem here. Tusk could go down. No, Undershock not going to be able to be there in time. I thought that they might try and rotate in and have the Glimpse coming back, but probably not enough damage to be able to take on down the Tusk there in the bottom lane. Yeah, now we can see CIS Rejects, the effects of this uh, early game laning stage working out for them, and the jungling of the Darkster, of course. They're starting to pull ahead in the last hits. The Slark and Lina, especially on top, and the net worth is going to reflect that. And then the Dark Seers, you know, not doing too terribly either. Obviously, you want to be in lane if you can help it, but uh, Iceberg is not getting dislodged anytime soon, nor is Artis on the Spark. Gunablade over towards mid, 48 HP, one more shot, gonna get it! Oh, okay, well, the Tusk was coming in from behind also, so the Naga Siren was dead anyway, but man, it did a lot of damage. 90 base here from the Lina, and this is a level 8 hero versus a level 4 hero. I mean, I don't really know how much, uh, how many times a level 4 hero is gonna get out of there, but still, CS3 just get a free kill in the mid lane, and Aspera have since abandoned mid. Like, Nogsiron tried to go there, very quickly realized it's not a good place to be. You should never be abandoning your mid lane. You should always have enough lane control to handle it, but Legion just doesn't have that. Yeah, a little bit too difficult there for her. It's kind of one of those things where you would have expected that maybe... I think that pretty much CIS rejects were probably not thinking that that was going to be a laser. And ooh, do glimpse back though onto always want to fly. The snowball is going to be good. Neither of the cooldowns are going to hit. He does end up getting caught there in the end by the Thunderstrike as well as the Ensnare, and he is finally going to fall. Gyrocopter getting the last hit. But what I was mentioning is that it seemed like Lena was going to be played in that support role, and then, you know, with the last pick Legion, they just realized, you know what, we can completely and totally dominate this lane. Why do we need to run this this way anyways and uh, maybe it was a plan from them from the beginning but it looks like this tower is about to fall at under 10 minutes oh god no <laughs> got him not going anywhere and our event's gonna try to come in but uh, iceberg has nukes a lot of nukes and the naga siren wasn't health healthy to start off with so iceberg gets another silver platter kill and uh, that kill on the tusk i mean it is very nice to get that obviously if you're a sparrow but that also rotated the clockwork in as well that was a four hero rotation to get one hero who's like pseudo support at this point. It's nice, but it's expensive as all hell. Like, Artie's up on top lane, has had Hand of Midas now for five minutes, has the Ring of Aquila, has the Poor Man's Shield, and I think given the pace of the game, can definitely look to go for either the Blink or the Shadow Blade. Uh, I don't know really which one's better. I think they're probably still pretty close to the same effect, but you know, any one of those aggressive, aggressively slanted items for the Slark and then he can start actually leaving this lane and look for those pickoffs on everyone else. Like, the Naga's Iron is vulnerable as all hell. The Shuck is only level 5 at this stage. Pretty much all of these are viable kill targets. Oh, speaking of viable kill targets, over towards the bottom lane. Always on fly getting snowballed into Roger. He has another strike now. Here comes the hook shot in. Always on fly getting the water punch out. Apple not doing a ton of damage, but will do enough to get the skill to help the Shuck's Thunder Strike and get that one. Call down, gonna cut off Iceberg, who's gonna miss the LSA, and Armand's gonna drop him as well. That's a big two kill here for Aspera. They do again rotate their entire team down here, but for Alina, that's worth it. 
Absolutely, completely and totally worth it. 1,800 gold swing into their favor. Gyrocopter getting a good portion of that, being able to finish off that Lena there. Lena was top of the net worth just before, and uh, now Slark's still there, so CIS Reject's still on top, but the Gyrocopter's been able to catch up significantly. Ooh, there's the glimpse on back. Actually going to be able to catch Always Wanna Fly. I don't know how that ended up happening, but really, really nice done. I guess, did he TP to the Tier 1? Yeah, he TP'd it tier 1, and then the glimpse, like, doesn't register when you're dead. So he did it immediately oh. once he respawned, and then, like, the glimpse delay or whatever has still had him back where he died from previous. I don't think that was the plan at all for the Disruptor, <laughs> but hey, free kill. It, it, you know, honestly, if it hadn't been for the particle effects there, showing that he was going towards their base, I don't know if they would have even known. Um, that he was getting glimpsed back towards him, so a little bit of a, kind of a bullshit kill, but also pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> really, really, really helpful, yeah, absolutely. Um, really, really cool there, so this is going to allow Vanscore to come on down here and steal a spell as well as get a little bit of extra EXP here, already level 6. It's a very, very dangerous time for a... Uh, for a spare to have the Rubik be level six already, a lot of great spells to steal in this game. Uh, call down as well as I mean, because if you think about a spare and what kind of their game plan was going into this a little bit, I feel like it's a lot of team fight abilities once they get a couple of these core items up. So maybe Rubik is going to be the thing that ends up turning it around for them. It's tough to tell. Uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case or not. I, I, I well actually no, sorry, see if three decks are ahead. Shadow Blade, okay. Pretty good for the Slark. Oftentimes getting picked up that uh, that Shadow Blade instead of the Blink Dagger, but Blink Dagger a little bit better, it looks like, with that higher win rate. Well, Artis may get slowed down a little bit. He's going to head up back towards top, which is a big gank waiting for him. Our man seems to have missed the smoke train, but still, one versus five, I don't like your odds as the Slark. They have the Song, they have the Blink Duel. They have a lot of team fight and a lot of proper setup. They're going to catch an angle at Artis, see him with the Observe Ward, get the Glimpse back available, at least jump in, duel is going to happen. Artis actually blinks out. Now, here comes the LSA and Snowball going to save Artis. And they sing, that's gonna fizzle the duel. They catch a couple of the stack storm. Calldown's gonna come in as well. Lots of damage being built onto the always wanna fly our team. They'll jump out with Slark Iceberg. Gonna fall as Vancouver does return the call down. Not quite enough damage. Follow-up, however, now he's caught with battery assault. He's gonna get chased down. There is a glimpse here, and Vanksquare has a trip back into RZ. Clutches. Net is gonna land, and the Arties, who this comes back in, gets a kill. It's already a three for two. Darks here, nowhere near this engagement. And it's gonna be a big fight here for Aspera. Really, really clunky fight like that's not how it was supposed to go but hey you can see already the power of song set up into a static storm into a call down that is difficult if not impossible to survive from lena though does have her yule step now completed so she has some sort of answer to it it's still one fight however for aspera but the darks here he's now packing the mech also and rt's gets to live i don't know if that was quite good enough for aspera so they also don't get any tower towers down they don't get much tower damage either yeah, and the big problem that they've been having is sort of the Slark staying alive and consistently able to get levels. And he's gotten a Hand of Midas up now. He's been able to uh, get the Shadow Dance up and was able to survive through that team fight. It does look like we might see CAS Rejects trying to make some type of thing happen in the jungle here. They're not going to find anybody, and if they stick around too long, they might run into a Gyrocopter or a Clockwork in the jungle. But yeah, the, the Slark staying alive through that was a really, really huge thing for CIS Rejects, and the fact that he's able to consistently get away with this Midas, having not died yet, uh, 2 0 2 oh, goodness, they're going to find the Darks here right here, Surge on up, this is going to be a duel again, that's going to be a victory as well. Damage starting to get stacked on up by this Legion Commander, and thankfully uh, for at least the uh, Team CIS Rejects, it's, it's not much, only 20 so far. Still setting the Legion Commander off on the right foot. I mean, she has the Blink Dagger. She has all, everything that she could possibly want to win a duel, especially maxed out press the attack at this stage. So she is going to be rotating around pretty consistently looking for these pickoffs. And the Gyrocopter is more than happy to join her. 602 on RMN. He's cleaning house. However, always on fly. Also going to find a house to clean. It's Disruptor's house. Snowball through is actually to keep him in the field, but a Dragon Slave over the tree is going to get to know the end. Short Glum's back on the Tusk. Not going to do anything. And they. Annihilate that Nogus Iron. Oh, please tell me they realize it's fake. Surely they do. Luckily for the Lina, LSA does enough damage that she doesn't have to blow the Laguna Blade and whiff that one, but still, not a big deal. It's uh, going to be easy to fade down from the bottom lane, however, under shock and RMN. Narrowly dodged shards. Iceberg looking for a Yule Scepter, but no, it actually doesn't have it because he used it on the illusion from before. And now Undershock actually has an angle here to blink in towards. Always want to fly. He's charging forward at half HP. Where are you going, Tusk? Oh, he's looking for him. He's not going to find him. We have pings out. That's from Orange, however. RMN. 
That's him, and he's gonna say, guys, don't move, don't breathe. Vision <laughs> is based on movement, we should be okay. Absolutely, <laughs> don't want to run into those T-Rexes of the Dire. It does look like they're gonna go forward now. Vanscore ends up getting the lift off before the duel. Undershot, complete and total disaster. This is going to be a cooldown on top of three. Is it gonna be enough for the kill? I don't think so. Afterlife trying to make something happen here as well, but it looks like Armand is going to be able to get away. RZ ends up hitting the ensnare on top of the Darkseer. Might be able to just disengage at this point in time. Don't want to push their luck too far. LSA catches Afterlife. Oh, just out of range of that song. And now the Naga actually Actually is a little bit in trouble here as well. Ends up getting caught by the tether. That's going to be enough, but the glimpse back going to be able to catch him. Our Zeke still falls. That was our Zeke. You don't make that play if you have a teleport scroll available. He didn't. There's 45 seconds off, so he was trying to run. Ended up uh, kind of giving his clockwork friend the shaft, and Gyrocopter also was picked off right before the song started because of the damage over time effect of the Dark Radiance Pack from Artis, who came in fallen. just in the nick of time, and from a great angle at that. CS Reject lose no one. The Rubik was in a really bad spot there, but still, the uh, he the fact that he saw the Legion Commander, and Legion Commander had to set up first to press the attack if she wanted to get that solo kill with the duel, meant that Rubik just issues its Telekinesis command, and then as soon as Legion Commander blinks in, she's going to get lifted up. It comes out a lot faster than duel, and Rubik just got it off in time. CS Reject collecting a huge win off of that one gonna spike the gold and experience advantage right back down in their favor and this is uh, gonna mean a couple of bigger items on the way we already see this shadow blade picked up on RT is doing some pretty good work already but he has another 2,000 gold on top of that I think it's probably gonna be a Scotty or one ultimate orb item and Lena also has her agony center in her a lot of threat on all these heroes from CIS rejects and Rubik also 1500 gold close to his blink yeah, definitely. That's going to be a really key point there is when he's able to jump on in and have to create a little bit of extra separation. Ooh, Tusk here is going to find a couple of heroes. They might try and initiate onto this a little bit deadly. Song is still down at this point in time for another 80 seconds. So if they wanted to try and fight, they definitely could. We'll see, considering the fact that four members of CAS Rejects are here, if they try and push their luck a little bit. Waiting for the creep wave to move on in. It does look like everybody's getting ready for a bit of an initiation. And I kind of feel like at this point, I don't know if a Spera should fight against this. They have their song, they go in, and they probably win. Like, the song set up into the Static Storm is backbreaking, but they Radiant don't, so I don't really think they have a great way attack. of starting this fight. Like, Afterlife, in theory, Radiant can do it with the hookshot, but he's not really going to be willing to do so. And RT is on the front lines, he's hard to bring down, so he'll just go invis and shadow dance away. Tower is gonna get, you know, called down. Iceberg gonna get caught in the field as well, but he will have to save him for the second missile and a lot of that damage. Always on fly, trying to get there with the ice with snowball. It's not in time though, Iceberg is gonna fall. Now, jump in, Undershock is gonna get the duel onto Vanksor, though he will lose it, get the damage to the Rubik. Walls deployed from Goretz, gonna prevent our spare from chasing any further, but is gonna dive right through it. He's gonna miss the pounce, however, onto RMN. He still doesn't have his shadow dance though, he's gonna try to go for this gyrocopter. He'd get him and the tower at that. Now onto Roger with the Iron Shell ticking. There's no way Disruptor gets out of here. It's a four kill for CS Reject in exchange for two. RT's got free farm and this is the impact of it. Now it's a BKB in his inventory. That was a massive fight for CIS Reject, which could have been almost completely avoided, if not won by Aspera, should they have started that fight with Song of the Siren. Absolutely, and we talked about it. They end up fighting there with Song of the Siren. They end up winning that engagement, I feel like. They don't. It's going to be the other way around, and still with no... Uh, she does have Song up now, so can be able to defend against this. We'll see. They do end up catching uh, uh, side of that RTs right there. And I have to say, I think that probably BKB here is a game-winning item for Slark, potentially. You've got so much uh, tank ability in terms of your ability to deal with physical damage already, just because he has really, really high armor with all of those Essence just staff stacks. The problem that the Slark does end up facing, particularly against the Gyrocopter, is the massive magical damage that can come out, both in the form of Rocket Barrage as well as Call Down. And BKB solves that issue completely and totally. And I think that probably if he is able to at least not get dual before he's able to get off the Shadow Dance, I think that he probably is going to just be able to run a train on all of these people here. Now, Aspera do have some tools like trying to lock down RTs for long enough despite his BKB, like they do have the duel, they do have the hookshot from the clockwork, uh, but still it's so difficult attack. to land unless you set up for the Song of Siren. Iceberg, he's going to break a smoke Radiant with an Invis rune, at least on attack. one hero, he should know what's going on. There's a sentry here on Roger, but he's not going to drop it just yet, now out of range. Iceberg has a free pick on RMN, and we'll jump forward, bank score, looking for a lift off. RMN needs help, like right now, where's his buddies? LSA is there, Lacuna Blade, that's a dead gyrocopter soon, he's going to survive for a little while longer with the 
deploys a call down, but will end up dying in the end. Now Arceus jumps on Taraji, will slay him in an instant. And Gorus is going to surge forward, looking for our Zeke. It's sing or die right now, Naga Siren. The Rubik doesn't have another stun. Gorus, though, sticking onto him. With the Iron Shell, going to blink right up his shards. Mirror image. Our Zeke's trying to book it out of the round. Here comes Arceus. Sing. There it is. They forced it out. That's all CS Rejects wanted. And there's no follow up to this one. There's no static storm. So everyone else from the Dire, they just walk away, happy with the fact that now the spell is on cooldown for another three minutes. They'll mech up and they will just push this tower down. And that's. Uh, they could. Honestly, I'm wondering if it would have been more worth it for Naga to just die there. Like, if you look at this situation now, I think that CA Rejects can almost just push high ground, honestly. They're probably not going to try and push their luck too much more, going to back out, but if they wanted to, they can go and take Roche, they can go on down for the bot tier 2, and there isn't, like you said, for another 2 minutes, a real way for a Sparrow to fight. I mean, Naga Siren is already back up and, and rejuvenated. Honestly, if she would have died... Oh, sorry, not she didn't die, that's why. Uh, but she probably would be back alive right about now. They might have been able to formulate some type of defense of that Tier 2 tower, or potentially at least the bottom tower that looks to be going down shortly as well. Orsias Redex can play it slow for a little while longer. So the uh, Tusk now closing on his Blink Dagger, which is, I would imagine, the item of selection. Alternatively, a Glimmer Cape, but you know, either way, big defensive item and you know, semi offensive item as well. Aghanim Scepter, only 80 gold from completion for Iceberg. The Slark is going to get picked off up towards top lane, actually. Undershock's going to draw that one by himself. In a creep wave, got a lot more moment of courage, courage procs than usual, and was able to drop the Slark. That's a huge kill for the Legion Commander. It's a 2,000 experience. It's going to give for level 13. And over towards mid lane, also, they're catching the Rubik. And Iceberg goes with the net. He's getting with Static Storm also. Kinetic Field not going up just yet. This Lina is fast. Is she fast enough? Shard's going to block them in. And that's going to save Iceberg, but still, it's a huge two kill for Aspera. But after what they lost in that mid lane fight, I'm not sure if that's necessarily good enough. Now, Ag's up on Lina. She has a regen rune, which seems fair. And with the Darkseer now arriving, with the Blink Dagger vacuum wall, I don't know if Aspera can actually go for this one, at least not safely. Moretz, so Snowball in first for RMN. Did Laguna Blade. RMN still surviving for a little while longer. It's healed up a little bit, but not enough. He'll drop it eventually. Now Unshot gets in there with the duel, but immediately he gets lifted up into the air. The duel looks like it will fizzle. Goretz will fall, but now Undershock will fall as well. Got the duel damage, though, so a victory for Legion Commander. Now they're going to chase forward for a little bit more. Iceberg's not going to get Glimpse back into the Tusk instead. Vangscore going to jump the cliff. Look for a lift up, not gonna get it. Bounces himself to the high ground. Not sure if that was intentional. It would have been sick if there was someone up there, but it seems like this Roger Disruptor should be getting away, and he will. But Legion Commander and Gyrocopter ultimately do go down, and Iceberg still lives. And oh, they do catch Afterlife. Snowball, it's gonna connect, and that'll be off the clock. That was freaking awesome by Vanscore. Really well played to continue the chase. Legion Commander 48 damage one on LCO and 14 damage one by Rubik. It's a good little uh, tidbit as well there. The play there to jump forward, stealing cogs, and then being able to push him back with his own cogs that was stolen just adds insult to injury right there. And our Zeke does have 2,400 gold now, so. Or RT, sorry, has 2400 gold now, so should be able to build into the next item here. Potentially going to try and go for that Scotty next. That seems to me like the probably best option for him. The more HP, the more damage, the ability to sort of consistently stay on top of somebody. And it looks to be like they're ready to push this tower. And with Song up, maybe this is the moment that Aspera chooses to try and fight. Yes, Redex should know about this. They do have the burst power to get a kill. If they have their Lina in position, they're gonna jump forward for RMN. RT is gonna get sleep. How spread out can they get? There's a three man static storm here, and Roger's gonna slowly get into position. It's gonna catch only onto two, actually. No, no, only onto one. It's only onto Bank Score. They're gonna jump in on RT's duel love, try to bring him down. He's the BKB up, though. Nothing that much damage up with the snowball. He'll get even saved by that one. A lot of spells flying, but it's gonna be RT down to RMN first. He's gonna drop as gold Legion Commander by the Lina. Throws out a Laguna Blade, kill the clockwork. The back always wanna fly. Gonna kill a couple, and RT is also gonna kill some Naga Sirens. That's GG called. And Aspera, that was, in theory, supposed to be the setup. That was supposed to be the fight. But one man static storm after the song is not going to do it. Absolutely, that was a huge problem right there, and like you said, that was the fight, that was the moment, weren't able to keep the Tusk stuck in there, maybe if you were able to finish off that duel, the Snowball wouldn't have come on in as early, it would have gone differently, but unfortunately not meant to be this time around, so Aspera is going to have to go on in to the next set of games here, CIS Rejects moving on, congratulations to them. And congratulations to us, because we don't have to deal with any of that time <laughs> scenario stuff, so we don't have to worry about that. So yeah, if it was a 1-1-1 situation, which is not going to be, then, well, the admins at least had to make some sort of weird call, and I don't want to be dealing with that at all. 
But either way, CSU Jack's going to take it 2-0, it seems. And now we have Aspera going up against Walrus Punch. And that is going to be uh, pretty darn interesting. They're fighting for their second spot. They're fighting for their survival in this tournament. And it will be a very close one. Guys, I'm Mike Loris. I've been joined by Lyrical Gangster on the microphone. Drop Bear has been providing the stats. Follow us all under those names. It's all on the stream title and whatnot. And, of course, Corrupt Drop Bear on Twitter. Uh, we'll be right back for the last game of the day. It should be a Sparrow versus Walrus Punch coming up very shortly. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 